his innovation through greater ideas and theories creates a better way, better ideas and a better product or a better service. So we often look at our phone and we say, is it a product? Is it a service or is it both? And in the world today, as we move through social innovation, it is often that we are providing both a product and a service. And we're providing, in the world of Enactus, a transformational service. So in the hierarchy of offers, transformation is a big opportunity, both for you, but it's also a big responsibility. So we'll talk about the gravity of exactly that responsibility and that opportunity. So click again. So who's going to do all of this great work for us? Well, the people who care to make oh. it happen with the right values and verve. So I'm looking to all of you because that's who I serve. My passion is to support you in creating a better world, a greater opportunity, not only the world in general where we all live, but your world in particular. So it's sustainable. Great. Let's go to the next slide. So earlier yesterday, you may have heard or earlier this morning or maybe maybe yesterday or two days ago, you were sent some audios. And I'm going to start by asking a couple of questions about those three different audios. And you were likely asked to listen to two or three of those audios. And when you did, you were asked to do something for three days. Why three days? Well, three days helps take information that your parents may share with you, your friends may share with you, your professors, your academic advisors, and help integrate it into your mindset so that you can put it into practice for a minimum of three days. Many of you may have heard about 21 days of habit. So once you take information into your, into your brain and transfer it for three days into 21 days, then it can become habit. Well, habit is good and fine, but there are bad habits in the world too. There's smoking, there's tobacco, there's all kinds of different habits. Even exercise can be a habit. Doesn't mean we love it. It doesn't mean we want to do it. But if you can take information for three days in your brain, make it interactive, move it into 21 days of habit, then you have an opportunity to decide if you want it to invite it into you as your character, to live it, to deep inside of your heart and your mind and part of your values. So I th sent three audios out there and I'd just like to go to you to start with and asked who listened to Interesting versus interested. Just go ahead and raise your hand in the thread if you listen to interesting versus interested. Some of you listen to context versus content. And some of you listen to authentic communication. So I'd like to learn from you what you heard back. What was it that you heard? So let's start with interesting versus interested. Where are you? Go ahead and raise your hand and I'd love to hear from you to start. All right, let's go. To, let's Hello, go. So, yeah. yeah. So the topic interesting versus interested uh, was something which I felt like I really related to because um, the people who we meet um, and uh, I think all of us are actually looking for somebody to actually listen to us. And um, when we even when we're talking to our friends, uh, we're more inclined to talk to people who we think um, actually calmly listen to us even if they don't give us any advice or um, even if um, you don't necessarily hear anything back from them but if they calmly listen to you because I feel all of us are just looking to vent to somebody and um, that just for a reassurance that someone is there to just hear us out. So I think that's something which I related to personally. Well, it's beautiful to hear that response because the best definition of communication I ever heard is these few words. Communication is the response you get. Communication is the response you get. I'm going to give you 10 steps today to help you live a life of greater passion and purpose. So 10 steps. So when you talk about interesting versus interested, when you close your eyes and you imagine the person had the most influence in your life, the person that you think about 
and that person who is maybe your mentor or your guide, that person that you found most interesting. When I ask people all over the world, in many, many classes all over the world, who is the most interesting person in your life? Nine out of 10 of the responses are someone who is interested in you. Could have been your teacher, it could have been your professor, it could have been your academic advisor, it could be your mom, somebody in your family, your dad, somebody who is interested in your success. So if that's true, if one person that you found to be most interesting was because they were interested, then we too can imply exactly that. We can take interest in others, take interest in our class, take an interest in our teachers. By taking interest, we become interesting. It all adds up. So it's reciprocal, it's ebb and flow. So when we take that into account, we then know that in order to be influential in life, we need to start by being genuinely interested in this crazy world of all kinds of social pushes from TikTok to Instagram. There's all of this information being pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. But who is receiving? Who is gathering it? And what does it mean? And so as you live your life of purpose and passion, you're going to want to embrace other people's passion, build on their passion, listen to it, draw it out, and then gather with those people that can help you in a life of purpose. Your team is going to be so important. Thank you for that amazing answer. Thank you. Context versus content. Sometimes we can look at this glass of water and see a glass half empty. Sometimes you might see a glass half full, and some of you might see something else. So who listened to context versus content? I'd love to hear from you. I always learn in, in America that when I come to Delhi or Mumbai or anywhere in India, I cannot order chai tea because it's just chai chai. One or the other. All right. Who listened to context or content? And who just go ahead in the thread and raise your hand. Sir, I did. Um, and so basically, I really when I when I started listening to the audio clip, it was you said, imagine you scored a 97 out of I mean 97 on a test. And then you said it's out of 200 and that, you know, fraction of a second when it hits you that you scored 97 out of 100, you're really happy. And when it suddenly turns to, I mean, out of 200, it, it all changes kind of. So context is really important um, in communication. And I mean, um, when you're expressing yourself also, um, context is very important. I learned that from um, that audio clip. Well, great. It's really beautiful to hear what you you learn because when you then learn, oh, 97 out of 200, oh, I don't feel so good anymore. And then you learn 97 was the highest score. Oh, I feel better. But then could you even feel better by saying, what if you were the one to bring everybody into the highest possible score? And that's a life of social entrepreneurship. That's a life of social innovation is that you perform with your passion. You run your race. And as soon as you cross the finish line, you turn around and help others across or help others along the way. But we have to look out for ourselves, just like anybody who's ever flown in an airplane. They always tell you in the uh, when the event of an emergency your oxygen comes on and you put yours on first you put yours on first before you put other people's oxygen on so that you are healthy you are sustainable you are strong and you can help others so oftentimes we're misunderstood or somebody comes in and they're angry but we don't know the greater context so bring people into the greater context the biggest possible context in the world and then drive it with your bring in your passion and your understanding, your empathy, and your ability to bring other people's along will be so much greater and so much more powerful. Who listened to authentic communication where we touch on values? Who listened to authentic communication? I'd love to hear from you. Authentic oh, yeah. communication, just I'd love to hear anything that you got from it, even if you got just a little tiny something from it. What did you get? 
Uh, yes, sir. So I heard the uh, audio for authentic communication. So uh, basically what I learned was that when you speak or when you communicate, it's not only your words that that express yourself, it's your body language, it's your uh, voice, and it's the complete you that is giving a message out there. And how uh, listening is equally important when you come at speaking. I mean, uh, the both aspect of communication work together and, uh, and, like, and failure in any of them leads to a failure in authentic communication. Anushka, thank you. That's a beautiful answer. And and uh, I'm glad that you heard that because there's a lot to hear and a lot to understand when we think about authentic communication. Because so often when somebody's talking, we want to jump in and finish their sentence. So we think we know where they're going to go, but we need to allow that time to finish. And we lead, need to let them know that we're taking a moment to really hear somebody out and that they will do the same, hopefully for you and reciprocate. We can't expect it, but if we bring in the practice and we have a better chance of, of teaching it and being uh, reciprocal, but there's a very big key there at the end. Uh, it's, it's a three day ask. And that ask is so important. It is about establishing your personal values. So I'm going to help you with that in just a moment. But if you lead your life with values, you'll find that your life will profoundly change. And those who respond to you will respond in a different way that you never thought possible. Our world is in a battle for your attention. We're in a battle to move the needle so, so slightly and to persuade people into a life of purpose or passion or into something that we want. If it's something special for dinner and you you want your mom to, to make it or you want your friends to come along, some our life is about teeny tiny pushes. And the more artificial intelligence continues to advance, the battle for your heart and mind is on. And so we have to be beyond artificial intelligence. We have to apply actual intelligence because when it comes to the phone, on your mobile right now, if we were all to Google the word passion, if we were just to Google the word passion, if we tried it right now and Googled the word passion, it is very likely that something different will come up for each one of us. And I'm not talking about the definition of passion. I'm talking about the first thing that comes up on a Google search will be slightly different. Why will it be slightly different? Because it's based on your behaviors. It's based on information that people are paying to get to you because they want to influence you. And so that's all artificial intelligence at work. And if we don't rise above it, if we don't become aware of it, we'll be manipulated by it. So it's better for us to look at artificial intelligence, apply our actual intelligence, and then double down with emotional intelligence and we will outsmart the system. And the idea is artificial intelligence is meant to work for us. We are not meant to be a slave to artificial intelligence. It's there for us. It's not robots, it's cobots. To advance humankind, to advance our prosperity, to advance our planet. And so as a social entrepreneur and a social innovator, that's a big responsibility for all of us. All right, I told you I was gonna take you through 10 steps. You just got three of them, so we're well on the way. Let's go to the next slide. We're well on the way. So the next one I'm gonna ask you to uh, take out a piece of paper or in your notebook, and I'm gonna ask you to just put down a design. You can use this design. I tend to use it a lot. Why do I use this? And does anybody know what that is referred to or called? Just put it in the thread, please. Show me in the thread what you find that to be called. Just jump right in there. You can make your notes. What is this pattern called? All right. So it's referred to as a couple of things. Some refer to it as the golden spiral. Some will refer to it as the golden ratio. Some refer to it as the Fibonacci spiral because it was an Italian uh, scientist who really coined the Fibonacci. 
but he didn't invent it by any means. Go to the next slide. So why do I use the Fibonacci when I'm mapping goals? Well, take a look where Fibonacci appears. It's amazing. It appears everywhere in nature. It appears out in our galaxy. It appears in a beautiful flower. It appears in the pattern of a, a snail and in the music and in the piano keyboards, even the human face, even artwork, even a powerful hurricane or a storm comes in as a Fibonacci. So the pattern of a Fibonacci is quite amazing. And if we look at this beautiful pattern found so many places in nature, not only does it show us beautiful, it also shows us exponential growth. It takes information and it multiplies it over and over and over. And the simple pattern of the Fibonacci is this growth spiral if you look at it from inward outward. And you can look at it both ways as we're going to. But that pattern is based on the two previous numbers add up to the next numbers. So zero plus one equals one. One plus one equals two. And then when you add the one plus two equals three. The two plus three equals five, and then it grows exponentially. So I'm just using it as a fun pattern to look at. Why? Because there are no straight lines in the universe. In all of the universe, there are no straight lines. Even light, you'd think, travels a straight line. But Einstein proved that even light bends around objects, has a gravitational force. So we too have gravitational forces. We too can invite in friends. We too can invite people in with our passion. So let's go to the next slide. Great. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is on this piece of paper, draw a pattern. And if we think about what we're about to draw is a map. It's a map of your life, a map of your goals. And this is already step number four to draw the map and then step number five to do what we're going to do next so we're almost halfway actually already so this is easy so far just follow along because if you do all 10 steps i guarantee you you will have a life of purpose and passion and find greater happiness and i know it because it's come back and it's proven itself time and time and time again so what i'd like you to do is draw this pattern on a piece of paper and I'd like you to ask the question, you don't have to write it down, what do you value most? And now what I'd like you to do is take a moment, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes, and I want you to picture into your mind's eye, in the theater of your mind, what is it that you value most? Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a thing? Or is it something else? Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a feeling? Is it something? What is it that you value most right now in your life? Not later, but right now at this moment. What is it that you value most in your life? Just take a moment, visualize it, and write it down. How many of you would be willing to share what you wrote down of what you value most in the thread? Just go ahead and share with me what you've written down. I'm trying to make sure I can see that thread conversation. And perhaps one of you can share with me what's being written down. Vridi, could you do that? Could you take a look? What sure, is it sir. that you value most, please? Yeah. I'm not receiving any responses as of now. Um, I would say I just wrote that um, it's my parents and grandparents, family. Yes, somebody wrote family and love. Privilege of being safe okay. um, during this pa pandemic. Family. Yep. Family, love. Beautiful. Great. Anybody else want to volunteer? What it is it that you value most in your life? Don't so be shy. Even I've written family. Yeah, family. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Life. Somebody's written life. Beautiful, great. We're only Can here. Have, yes. Uh, 
I also wrote a family, and because of the fa- like the feeling of being with the family, because I know that whatever, like if something comes around or if like there there will be people to hold me back. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the uh, like whole situation like taking under control that I have written family. Beautiful. <laughs> So Any somebody's other? written. What I value most is a quality, and it's honesty and open minded mindedness. And it is honesty and open mindedness. Okay, great, yeah. great. So take a moment. And what this is so important. Step number five. I want to stop here because as we get halfway through, how many people actually make a goal map for themselves? a map of their life, the things that they want to accomplish, the things that they value most. Now you just think, well, of course, I have that in my heart. I have that in my head all of the time. But it is the opportunity to actually write it down, hold it, wake up to it, remember it. Because as we populate this goal map, this life map for you, you're gonna see it's gonna help you through life. You'll be faced with it because oftentimes we forget what we value most. We forget to wake up in gratitude and ask the question of what we value most. And when you think about what you value most, love, family, equality, truth, honesty, integrity, if you think about that, those things that you value most, you will learn they're already here. You already have them. Now it's a matter of keeping them and keeping them sacred to you, keeping them important keeping them on a reminder to yourself. That's how important they are. So as you write down what you value most, you can start to surround it by different goals, your personal goals, your project goals, your team goals. And when you work with Enactus, for those of you involved and engaged with Enactus, you know that you have your project goals. You have a place to go to. Now, wouldn't it make sense that if there was just a straight line from where you are to get to your goals? Well, that's not the case in our world. It's not the case where there's a straight line. There are no straight lines in the universe. And in fact, that's what makes life an adventure. So when we accept that the life is not just a process, it's processional, processional. It's an opportunity to be open and curious to the adventure along the way. So when we think about what we value most, then that helps us set our values. It helps us determine what are our personal values. What are those things in our life that we want to carry, talk about? What do we want to ask others about? All right. It's um, many of you are at home. So, and many of you are with your parents or siblings. If you want to freak out your parents, just ask them what it was when they were your age. What did they value most? Just ask them. And just ask the question. So when you were my age, what were you, what did you value most? Or ask them what, what were they passionate about and their dreams? And just listen to the response you get. Don't jump in with another question or thought. Just say, when you were my age, what were your dreams? What were your values? What did you value most? You might be surprised to think that you don't know the answer or you've never heard it before, but they're going to be super surprised that you're even asking it. Why? Because you are interested in them. Ask your teacher this question. Ask your professor, professor, when they were your age, what were they passionate about? And what will open up is this amazing, beautiful dialogue of how do we continue to hold that passion? And we're going to talk about taking that passion into purpose because it's not easy. All right. Good so far. So you've taken a piece of paper, you've made a pattern, you've written down on the right what you value most. Awesome. Cool. So let's go to passion and the relationship of passion and purpose. So when we think about passion, we think about our present tense. What are the things that excite us the most? What are the things that we want to do when we have that extra time. Now we know it could be video games, it could be cooking, it could be art, it could be music, it could be coding, it could be studying, it could be meditating, it could be a quiet adventure, it could be a walk, it could be just hanging out with friends. What is it that we're most passionate about? 
And when you think about your passion, how many times have people say to you or discouraged you and say, oh, that's nonsense. Oh, you're wasting your time. Oh, you're not going to be able to make a living doing that. Does that sound familiar to you? So oftentimes we put our passions away because we think as we become these crazy adults that we can't make a living from that. And sometimes it's very true. And those that will tell you so, they're telling you because they love you. They care about you. They're interested in you. They're not wrong. They want success for you. People that love you will say, oh, that's silly or put it away. They might, or they might encourage you. Either way, either answer is not wrong. But just listen to why they are talking about it. So when we think about passion, be it dance, be it music, be it coding, be it studying, be it poetry, be it spoken word, whatever it might be, it may not be your main course in a life of purpose. It may not be what you're making a living at. It may not be your main vegetable, but it's very likely to be your spicy curry. It's very likely that it will flavor your life of purpose. So when you look at your passions, look at them in some kind of balance because you might be passionate about video game playing or video games. But if you're not converting that passion into a rocket fuel, into propelling you forward, then you're just being played by that game. You're not creating games or you're not using your mind to think about how you can take that passion forward. But the beautiful thing about passion, it learned, it teaches you to be passionate, passionate. So we can be passionate about anything in life if we so choose. It's a mindset. All we need to do is focus on the present moment and those opportunities and decide to be unbelievably crazy, curious, and passionate about it. It's a mindset. And when we adopt that mindset of living a life of passion, we can propel ourselves. We can fuel ourselves forward in ways that you never thought possible. So next time you're in an online class, as hard as it is with your professor, I want you to monotask, put away your distractions. You can have your notes, but I want you to focus like crazy in that moment and decide to be passionate as tough as it might be because you're at home. There's lots of distractions, but I want you to try to be extremely passionate about what you're learning because that rocket fuel will continue to pro will propel you forward. Who doesn't love a passionate person, even if they're quietly passionate or outwardly passionate? Don't you want to hang out with those people that have that special sauce, that secret happiness, that suspicious smile? That kind of passion is what people put out in Bollywood. It's why they become famous is because it's it's why they're great artists it's why they become great doctors because they're passionate so when some people might tell you to put away your passion just know it will flavor your life it may not be the main ingredient but the relationship of passion and purpose is something beautiful so let me just stop and talk about how many of you have ever heard from a professor or somebody who's like oh but what problem are you solving what problem are you solving that's great. That's fine. But what problem are you solving? Do you ever hear this? I hear it all the time. I will ask you that when you next time you hear problem solution, what problem are you solving? That person thinks from their left brain, very analytical. It's not wrong, but it's not the whole world. So whenever you hear what problem are you solving, you might want to transfer that in your mind to say, what purpose are you serving? And what passion am I using to solve that purpose? Because we have plenty of problems in the world, plenty of problems in the world. But if we decide to look at the world as problems, we will find problems. Problems will find us. Do you want to live a life of problems? Or would you prefer to live a life of passion and purpose? The difference is even when you see a starving child on the side of the road, homeless, starving child, is that child a problem? Or is that child something beautiful? It's a beautiful mind, a beautiful potential, beautiful opportunity, a beautiful soul, a beautiful human being. When we see our beaches are polluted with plastic, 
we can look at that as a problem, but we can also look at it as the world as something beautiful. And so, yes, we can see problems in the world and we can seek solutions. But if you're not passionate about solving problems, then you're just doing this factory work. You're doing something you don't really want to do. But if you choose passion and purpose over problem solution, you'll live a different life. And when we look at the world as beautiful, we can then ask ourselves this question. How do we protect that beauty? How do we add to the beauty? How do we create more beautiful? Or maybe we just need to leave it be. So I invite you to look at the world through a different lens as something beautiful, even if beauty is hard to find. During COVID, beauty is hard to find. But guess what? We're at home with family. We're with the things that we value the most in this time. You know what else in the time of COVID? It's the time for social entrepreneurs. It's the time for us to rise. This is the time of unique opportunity. Is it a problem? Sure. But could we serve a purpose? Is there something beautiful happening right now that the universe is trying to tell us? Slow down. Stop polluting my air. Stop polluting my water. Time to clean up. Listen to birds again. Plant a tree, feed nature, feed ourselves. There's a great opportunity. So when we turn problem solution into passion and purpose, it's our mindset. We live a different life and we bring other people along. It's so much more fun. Believe me. All right. Do you want to go to a party of problem solution? Or would you like to party with people who are passionate and have purpose? It's up to you. Cool. All right, so the relation of passion and purpose becomes really interesting. Sometimes we could do a passion test and we can say, hmm, what are the things that in this list that you would prioritize? What would you value most? Status, money, creativity, happiness, social impact. What is it that you would value most? So in the thread, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and grab one of those words out of status, money, creativity, happiness, and social impact. And in the thread, write the word that you prioritize, that you're going to put first right now in your life. Okay? Just let's just go take a look. Status, money, creativity, happiness, and social impact. Okay? I see happiness. I see social impact, creativity. Uh, more happiness. Okay. What about status? What about money? Happiness, happiness. Okay. Lots of happiness. It's a happy crew. Money. All right. Somebody put it up there. Amazing. Great. Happiness, because if I am happy, I will be able to achieve the rest. Okay. Can happiness buy you money? I don't know. All right. Okay, there's no wrong answer. But we can have respect for the people that have provided their opinion or their what matters most at the moment. And the thing now is to be open. Because when we bring together a team, having a variety of different passions, not all the same passion, no, that doesn't make a really good curry. We need all of the ingredients. We need turmeric. We need the vegetables. We need everything. And we need it to simmer. So when we're bringing people along, it's not that we all have the same passion. It's that we have complementary passions, that we complement each other. So when you look at status and you put this passion test out there, there are some people that say, you know, your parents may want you to have status. You may choose to use status, not as a bad thing, but as a good thing, because you have influence with status. When we look at money, we tend to go, well, money doesn't buy us happiness. That's true. But when we look at projects of purpose and social innovation and social entrepreneurship, some kind of currency helps our sustainability, and we shouldn't be shy about it. And you shouldn't be shy about saying, oh, if we're volunteering to do this, what would it be like to get paid to do this so that I can sustain my life and then I can help others 
create a living. Creativity is this gift that we're all born with. We're born into creativity. We are born into abundant creativity at birth. Unfortunately, many of us unlearn creativity as we grow older. We put creativity aside and yet we're born with it. It's how we learn. We learn through play and that's what drives our happiness and ultimately by creating a life of social impact. So all of these are important. Is there one more important? At any given moment in time, you will find that one of these might be more important than the others. Just embrace it. It's okay. Happiness can be the driver all the way through, but money doesn't have to be evil. If you're a social innovator or a social entrepreneurship, that's your currency. That's your sustainability. And it is okay. Cool. So when we think about a relationship between passion and purpose and we have this new opportunity to see life as beautiful. And so I mentioned that this not straight line is something called precession. And I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to ask you to be curious and look up the word precession because it's quite beautiful. It's the way life happens to us. When a honeybee goes to get um, nectar and bring it back to the hive to make honey, its intention is typically to go get nectar signal to the other bees where the nectar are, bring it back to the honey while they, to the hive while they make honey. But what happens along the way is procession. That bee is also pollinating the other flowers. And that's a life of procession. It's what happening, what's happening around us in our peripheral and being aware of it. So many of us, you may have heard the phrase, the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of happiness. It's written into our constitution in the, in the United States. And so when we look at the pursuit of happiness, then happiness is somewhere far away and we're pursuing it. We're chasing happiness. We're chasing happiness in the pursuit of happiness and we have a right to pursue happiness. But why do it? Why not have the happiness of pursuit? Why not already have the value of happiness? Be grateful and let that attract others. So if you ever hear the pursuit of happiness, I invite you to flip it, turn it around and think of, the happiness of pursuit and be happy in the adventure and create a life of adventure. And then when you put your value there, you can put your project goals down. You put your personal goals. We're into number seven. Let's go to number eight. All right. What's between passion and purpose? It's all you. It's all you, man. It's all you. It's all that performance. It's your team. It's your what, your when, your how, your where your who, and your why. You may have heard, start with the why. That's fine. Start with the why is fine if you have a why. If you don't have a why, it's no problem. If you don't have a why, put a place marker there. Put a place marker where the uh, what you value most, your project goals and your personal goals, and just leave it empty. It's okay. You'll get to it. Just have it there. Write it down and have it there because you will have many personal goals in life. I hope you have many. Your project goals will change. What you value most in life should stay the same. And it's okay. Just put an empty cell. Let it stare at you. Know that you're going to have a why. Because they say the two most important days in your life is the day you are born and the day that you find out why. It may not be here. Don't worry about it. It will come if you live a life of passion. So when we think about the what, the when, the how, the where, and the who, and the why, every one of those are important. We think about when it's managing our time. How much of our time is really put against our goals and how much of our time is really wasted? How much time that we have in our life is the limiting factor? Everything else is abundant. Time is limited. So we have to be precious and careful with that time. The where is easy. It can be anywhere. Who knew that when you signed up to go to school that you'd be at home? So where can change? Don't get caught in the where you're going to advance your passion. The where can be anywhere you choose. But what's really important to the right of that is the who. Who do you bring along? Who are your friends? Who are your partners? Who are you going to bring along in this life of purpose and passion? That who becomes really, really important. And then part of that is this pitch. As 
the cartoon goes, there's that thing of what the person is saying, and then there's the thing of what the person is actually hearing. And there's just this tiny little space in between. Even as I talk to you, you're not catching everything, and it's okay because there's more. And I'm here anyway for you. So, all right, I'm going to go to uh, number nine, and then I'm going to take some questions here. All right. So, number nine, check this out. Now we're getting into the advanced stuff here. All right. So, I know that's a lot of information but I want you to have it all. I want you to have all of this information because it's so important. Question for you. When you look at those two words, theory and experience, which one do you find to be most important in life? Theory or experience? Think about it. What's the one that's most important in life? You can put it in the thread, whether it's to have experience or have a theory. Have experience or have a theory? Look at all that experience. Wonderful experience. Wonderful experience. Wow. The first car manufacturer was a company called Ford, before Tata, was Ford. And then along came a company called Tesla, surpassing Ford as the number one car manufacturer. Many of you remember that there was a a video rental store at every corner in this part of the world. They were called Blockbuster Videos. And then along came Netflix. There were imagery companies like Polaroid and Kodak. And then along came Instagram. Now, was Polaroid and Instagram and Canon cameras. Didn't they have a lot more experience? Weren't they around in the world? Wasn't Ford around a lot longer than Tesla? Wasn't Kodak and Polaroid and all those image companies around a lot longer than Instagram or TikTok? What the happened? All of that experience out the door in a moment. Come on. There was dictionaries and thesauruses and encyclopedias. And then Google comes along. Wait a minute. The people that manufactured dictionaries surely had a lot more experience than Google. The fact of the matter is they had a different theory. And they changed our behavior in the challenge and fight for us and our time and our attention. Your teachers, your professors will help you with theory. And when you look at experience, you all say, I don't have a lot of experience, so I got to go get experience. You know what you can get right now? You can work on a theory. You can work on a theory because theories change the world. We lived most of our world, most of the population, most of life on Earth, believing that the world was flat. We sent ships out into the world to go find spices in India, to find the edge of the world. That was the theory that it was flat and we're gonna fall off until the theory changed that the world was round. So look at the relationship of theory because when you get the right theory, guys, you will be able to pitch your projects. You will be able to get believers. So the beautiful thing about theory, it's tied to belief. It's what you believe in. Now, if I'm gonna hire any one of you, right? You have limited experience. I'm sorry, you're 18, 19, 20 years old. You have only X amount of experience, but what you have is potential. And if somebody believes in you, they will invest in you. If you have a theory, people will invest in you. And if you can pitch them that theory or that belief, they'll invest in you and they'll see you through failures. But if you tell me you're experienced, you pitch me a project, I don't want you to fail. If I invested in you, I want that thing to succeed. But if I believe in you and you sold me you, I will see you through failures. I'll see you through challenges. I'll help you through. That's why I'm here today, because I believe in you. 
And my theory is if I help you with the tools to change the world, you will. And I will invest in you. I believe in you. I full heartedly believe in you. And quite frankly, you have an interesting advantage in the culture of India. You have a gift. It is no accident that the head of Google and Adobe and Microsoft are of Indian culture because you have a special gift. Take advantage of it. You have something different, something special in the world. That's a unique advantage. And it's an opportunity to build power in the world and do something really beautiful and really, really good with it. So then we, number 10, we put it all together, guys. We put it all together like a great recipe, like great powerful music, like a great opus. Put it all together and keep going. Tie your passion, your performance, and your purpose together. Live life to your full potential. Flip the pursuit of happiness into the happiness of pursuit. Enjoy life, the adventure of procession. And so when somebody faces you with problems, 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 that's okay. Just switch it from problem solution in your heart and in your mind into passion and purpose. And ask yourself if you can be passionate about it. And if you can't, it may not be right for you. But can you be passionate about it? Can you then put all of your time and energy, your what, your when, your how, your where, your who, and your why into your performance? That's the question. All right, speaking of questions, let's go to questions. Ask away, we only have a few minutes left. I burned up a lot of time, I'm so sorry about that, but I have so much to share with you and I wanna share more and there's so much more to share. Any thoughts, any questions? Uh, okay, sir. So uh, I would like to ask that. Okay, so now I have uh, heard you and it was just amazing and I am motivated. <laughs> but how to like be consistent? How to make sure that tomorrow or day after tomorrow I'm not again lying in my bed and just forget what I right. have learned today. Yeah. So what's the key to be consistent? Yeah, so thank you. So number four is to actually commit it to paper, write it down. So when you wake up, you have that piece of paper with you, put it in your pocket, put it close to your heart, carry it with you to remind yourself. Because when you wake up, it is still there. You just forgot. So we think about the things that we value most are so close to us, we'll never forget. But you were exactly right what you just said. We can wake up tomorrow or after dinner, or we get into an argument and we forget. Of course we do, we're human, it's cool, it's all right, we forget. So put it to purpose, literally write it down and communicate it with others. Because when you communicate your passion and purpose to others, they won't let you forget. It will become you, it'll become part of your character. People will know you for your passion, they won't let you forget. Can you have a bad day? Absolutely, they'll help you through the bad days. But if you live a life of passion, you're interested, you won't forget. Now, you used an interesting word in your sentence. You talked about, yes, I'm motivated, da 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 da, but you use the word but, okay? So, but is one of those words that I could say, you could say to somebody you love, I love you, but you're cooking. Mm. You know what you just did? You threw out all the love, doesn't matter anymore, because you used the word but and you stuck your butt in there. And now you talked about the cooking, right? So when you look at your, listen to your own language. And when you say, I love you, but you're cooking, take, get your big butt out of there and try the word and. I love you. And I'd love to help you with your cooking, with cooking tonight. Let's make it an adventure. Let's have fun. I love you. And wouldn't it be fun to take a cooking course together? Include yourself, turn your butt into an and. And those are just different language changes that we can start to adopt. Little things like that, that re continue to remind us. Beautiful words like what if. When somebody says what if, lean in because something's amazing is about to happen. Support them and don't throw in a but. Put in an and. Build on it. Build on people's dreams. Listen, be interested. Does that help? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, yeah, some language. It's work. You got to work at it. You got to work at it. Every That's why the, the audios ask you to do something for three days and then turn it into 20 days. Then 
bring it in as part of your character in life. So there's a question in the chat box. Um, how to not get influenced by what others are doing? How to stick to one thing? I tend to feel passionate about something, but after some time I get bored. Woo, yeah, don't we? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to stay passionate sometimes. And life is procession. It doesn't mean that we've got this target and we're so dead set on it because there's no straight lines to get to that target. We got to meander and we got to bring in others. So you will find your who when you articulate your passion and pay attention to others. The big, the best thing I can tell you to do is surround yourself by people who are interested in you and you are interested in them. Get a small crew together, get a team. And that's why at Enactus, we work so hard on getting small teams together. Small teams are what creates Google, what created Microsoft, what creates great music is a small team. When you think about your favorite Bollywood actor, you think about your favorite musician. Do you think they wake up in the morning and going, oh man, what problem am I gonna solve today? Nah, no, 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 they ain't doing that. They're like, yeah, let's put this in the key of C and G. Let's start the music, all right, let's make some music. Let's, let's make some art, let's make life, let's make poetry, let's make something beautiful. They start with passion. So when you do that, you will surround yourself. And when your passion is so profound and um, proud and loud, you will surround people who will help you. Every day will not be perfect. And by the way, when you think about the who, it's really important to remember there is no such thing as they. If you could take away one thing today, there is no they in the world. When you see challenges in the world, and you see pollution and you see problems and you see all kinds of things and you think, oh, the government, oh, another country, oh, those people, there is no they. There's no group of they, it's only a thing in our brain that we group people together, other cultures. It's what gets us into wars, gets us into trouble. There is no they, there is only us. And until we unite as us, that's how we can live a life of purpose and solve challenges, good ones. So there's no they in the world. Every time you find yourself writing they, think about it. Don't write the word but, try not to use the word but, replace it with an and. Those little reminders goes back to when you wake up in the morning, it reminds you each and every day, living a life of purpose. It's work, it's real work, it's okay, it's good work. Woo, there's so much more. Look, you know what this map can look like? Look, there's a full map. And it's crazy, right? All of the stuff there, every one of those is great fun lessons, really exciting. Managing your time when failure happens, when does a goal become an anti-goal? How do you test your theory? How do you invite your friends in? How do you put your vision and your values together? And then you can map out your, your business, your project goals into business goals, and you can put that together too. So, so much more, and I'm happy to share all of it with you. I'll take a couple of final questions, and I know we went over the amount of time. I want to be respectful of your time, and I'm deeply just so grateful to be with you guys. I know that's a lot of information. I'm sorry I try to tell you everything in the world because I want you to have the world. I want the world to be yours. Any other questions? So, we have a few more on this in the chat Let's box. Let's go. Uh, one is on the way to follow our passion, we come across a lot of naysayers and we tend to be demotivated henceforth. Yeah. How to deal with this? Yeah, let it be your fuel. Let those naysayers be your fuel. Take a moment to listen, but let it propel you forward. And what is it they're saying? Does it, is it, is it sometimes those naysayers um, in your mind might be naysayers, but they might be giving you information out of love. Sometimes people who care for you and love you, or even your teachers, it may sound like the wrong thing, but if you take the context, right? Not the content, but the context, you might find that they're actually delivering the information out of love or interest of you. Their intention, their intention might be true and you might frame them as a naysayer, but you know what? Ignorance is not people's problems. They just don't know. So you can spend a moment to help inform them Show them your passion and your energy and your verb. Like, 
how excited you are about that and let them see that, let them feel that. And then decide if that is really being a naysayer. Is the information with the best of intention that they just didn't know, they didn't get you. But if communication is the response you get, then your first job is give them an opportunity. Give them an opportunity to understand and to see. And then spend that moment, but not a lot of them. Not a lot of them with that. Don't, don't spend a lot of time with what you deem as naysayers, but give them the benefit of the doubt. Show them you're excited, that you're energized, and this is possibility. Invite them to come along. Try that first before you go, oh, they're a naysayer. I'm going to move out of the way. I'm going to ignore them. Try. Try to open the door first, because if you can open the door with what you deem as a naysayer and bring them along, then you can bring along your toughest audience. Spend a little time but not a lot of time. Oh, so the next question is, we are still young and there is a possibility that most of us still don't know what we are genuinely passionate about. There are things we like, but are not sure if we are passionate about them. So how do we actually realize what our true passion is? In a word, curiosity. If you don't know what your true passion is, decide to take on curiosity. Then apply some passion around other people's passions or projects. Just try for a moment to open up and decide today in class or on this subject, I'm going to be passionate about it. See if it fits you. It's like going into a shop with really great clothes. Try it on. Put it on, look in the mirror and say, does this look good on me? Does this feel good on me? But start positive. Start positive and passionate and say, wow, I've never tried purple today. Today I'm going to put on purple. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not so excited about it. Okay, but what did I do? I tried it. I was curious. I decided for a moment to be passionate about it. I didn't come in negative. I came in positive. So shift your mindset because there's so many things to be passionate about in the world. Adventure, food, music, the arts, coding. Everything is a possible point of passion. And there's so many of them and you can't have too much passion. It's abundant and it's available to you. Sir, you asked us to prioritize between money, status, happiness, social impact, etc. I would like to ask your top choice among all of them. At any given moment, anyone might be a top choice at any given moment in your life. For me, over time, I value creativity and social impact. Together, it's fuel to say creativity is art. It's beautiful. It's something I have abundance of, and I can apply my creativity for social impact. If I perform social impact correctly, I will have an opportunity to be sustainable, to invite money. Of the least important for me personally, and it doesn't make anybody wrong who chooses to have status, I don't choose to have status. That's not important to me. But I do recognize that you probably invited me here today because I'm the chief innovation officer of an actus. It's a title. And so sometimes people think, well, that's status. And so I can't devalue it if it gave me an opportunity to be here with you today. So sometimes you may view status as negative, it doesn't have to be. It could be a positive. It can be your access. There are beautiful titles. If you have a doctorate in your name, that demonstrates something that you earned. You earned in your life that doctorate. And so for many people, that can be considered as status. But that status is a privilege and a pleasure and an opportunity to live a life of purpose. So at any given moment, any one of those might be equally important or more important. But over time, I just choose creativity and social impact because I find my happiness there. So, I, of course, I love happiness. Who, hard to argue with happiness. We don't get to actually be happy all the time, but we can keep uh, keep it close to our hearts, right? Okay, anything, any more questions? Two more questions. I think we'll Let's just take it. two more questions. Um, yeah. As you mentioned earlier, at our age, we have more potential and not much experience. Does that really matter to others, third parties, as we are often expected to have practical experience over the knowledge we might possess? How yeah. can we express ourselves better in this regard? 
Yeah, what a great question. It's the it's the, just a beautiful question. Why am I here? Because of your experience? Why do people show up for you? Because of the experience you have? No, it's your potential. And the best way to demonstrate your potential is to be enthused about it, be excited, be passionate. So don't worry about your experience. You're having it anyway. It doesn't matter. You're going to have an experience, bad, good, or otherwise. You're going to have an experience. The skills you build is something amazing and very important. If you look at, uh, I will send it to you to share out, but it's the 2025 skills needed for the year 2025 as put together by the World Economic Forum. You'll see those skills. But in those skills are things like creativity, complex problem solving, things that you know you can work on. Those are important skills. And when you get hired, sure, people will look at your skills. But your great tiebreaker is your potential. If people believe in you and give them a reason to believe. So the answer to your question is give people a reason to believe in you and they will. The right people will believe in you. And that can come with having the right theory and to say, you know what? This is what I believe. I believe we might be able to do this. I believe we can do this. I believe we are doing it. And so when I, I think about words that you use, I would just ask you to try to raise your hand. Go ahead, try to raise your hand. Yeah. When we try to raise our hand, we either do or we don't. So when we look at words like trying, and we're in an interview or we're in a conversation and say, I'm trying to do this, change that language to I'm working to do this. Because trying the it doesn't make sure it doesn't say that you're actually doing so when you try to raise your hand you either raise your hand or you don't just raise your hand just do it don't try any just just work at it and tell people i'm working i'm passionate at it there's certain language shifts in your mind to take out the words but take out the word they and just challenge your own self give people a reason to believe in you be passionate be purposeful and put it out there. People will believe in you. They will see you through failures. They will see you through challenges. And there's places where you're actually not allowed on my watch to fail. I'm here to see you succeed. Now, a lot of people say failure is great. Failure is the le best lesson. And all of that is absolutely true. But guess what? The world has been failing forever. We've failed our environment. We failed people. We failed the poor. We failed creating plastics. We failed our air. Learn from other people's failures. And when you see people uh, who have been failed time and time again, don't fail them again. Not on, not on their watch, not without them knowing it. So there's places where you can fail yourself in trial and error. But there's also places where success, work for success. A lot of people talk about the lessons of failure. That's cool and it's true. But also, if you can learn from other people's failures, they're out there. There's thousands of years of failures. That's why we have bad air that we're breathing. It's based on human failure. So let's learn first from that failure before we go out and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. Let's learn from that failure and let's work for success in a life of purpose. So our last question for the session is, we, as part of Enactus, feel that the world needs to change and improve for the better. But a lot of people in the society try to come in the way of that and educating these people about it feels like talking to a wall, which is frustrating and demotivating. How do you think one can stay motivated to bring about a change in the society when he or she is surrounded by such people? Sure. So similar to the last question, and, and just even, and you even listen to the way that the the question is worded. It's not wrong, but it feels like you're talking to a wall, okay? Don't feel that way. Feel like you're talking to a mountain that you can move or something beautiful. See them differently. Start by seeing them differently. Start by seeing them as they just don't know yet what you know. And if you use your passion, you'll help them know. And as I said before, spend a little time, but not too much time. Spend some time because learning how to motivate other people is one of your greatest challenges because if you don't learn to motivate those who have a different point of view from you 
then you're only going to speak to those that have the same view as you. And you're never going to motivate a greater part of the world. So it's a, that wall is a beautiful learning opportunity. Have a dialogue. Try this. Instead of telling them about what you are, be interested. Start with interested. Ask them about their point of view. Start a dialogue in reverse. Don't try to just push it out and say, I know this. I'm going to change the world. Ask them about their world and if it's changeable and where they would like to change. So turn it around, even the mindset. It's not necessarily a wall. It might be something different. So just change your mindset and give it some time, but not all of your time, okay? Um, thank you so much, sir. Um, I mean, you took out time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. And um, it was such a great talk and I, I'm sure all the attendees would agree with me on this, that now they feel that somebody has got their back and um, they'll be willing to, I mean, do their bit for the planet, for everybody around us. And I'm grateful that you were here for this workshop. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. And please listen to your academic advisor. I, I thank you for uh, making this session possible. There's so much more and there's things that we could do together and interactive, but I would ask you to think about that passion that you might have in life, make yourself a 20 or 30 second video of that passion because when we meet again, that would be really fun to share each other's passions. Even if you don't know that you have it yet, that's okay. If you don't know you have a purpose, put a place for it. Please, those are the 10 steps. Write down on a piece of paper what your goals are. And even if you don't have them, just make a place for them, all right? It's really great to see you guys. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here. I have so much more to share with you, but that's a lot of information. But please make yourself a map, follow those 10 steps. I will provide these 10 steps back to you in a, in a document for you that's easy, but write them down, go for it. And let's meet again, please, because life is a great adventure. It's beautiful. Sure, sir. So as we discussed, we'll try to be there in Germany's um, meeting next time in December, maybe. And we'll try to, I mean, send you our passion pitches as you asked us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you, a beginning sir. of a beautiful day here. I'm going to send the moon back around yeah. to you guys uh, tonight. You'll see a nice big moon. I'm going to send it your way and I'll receive it from you again a little smaller. So thank you for this beautiful day. Namaste, everyone. Thank you everyone for joining. I think all of us can leave now. Thank you for your time and thank you for being here. Bye.